All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. We are here in Cards and Culture on the Purple Couch. I'm not on the Purple Couch right now, but I have two great guests, Skip Bertman, Dan Canterbury. Thank you guys so much for being here. Sure. Appreciate Great to it. be here, man. No, I appreciate it. This has been a long time coming. We've done some radio shows <laughs> together. Um, I was on your guys' show recently, so I would love to talk about that in the beginning, but uh, I obviously would love to get into your story, Skip, how you guys have met, coaching together, the legacy you guys have left here at, uh, at LSU Baseball, and um, the opportunities that you've allowed for myself and other people around town, and I'm just excited to dive in and give everybody a little glimpse into kind of the way you guys see the world and what you guys are doing and how you guys have influenced it, so... Oh. Why don't you, uh, Dan, you want to start us off and let us know a little bit about your guys' show together and how you guys do? Well, when Skip, uh, you know, retired from being an athletic director, I came back, started working at Tiger Athletic Foundation. It was talking to some people, and they said, you yeah, guys ought to do a radio show. There's a lot of people doing radio shows. And so, you know, when you get older, you're looking for things to do. <laughs> We're talking about off the air. You know, you're looking for things to do, and there's an opportunity to get out there. And, of course, Skip's got so much information, and I got a lot of history with Skip, which yep. we'll go into in a little bit later in the show. But the bottom line is we just got together, got some people to sponsor it up, and uh, it grew, and we've been doing it for like four and a half years now. That's crazy. That's yeah, lots of people years. have mentioned radio, Yeah, and uh, Dan has done a great job of uh, – of uh, getting into the radio with the right information, and uh, we've got some other help. And we're continuing to grow that one. Yeah. But uh, we enjoy that and uh, give out a lot of information. Yeah. You know, we're not we're not reporters. No. You know, we, we're just info yeah. people that uh, we're just coaches on a show that give information and opinions. We don't want any uh, hassle. Right. If you don't no agree, as long as it's about baseball or something close to us, okay. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you guys, you guys have a, such a plethora of experience and information and stuff, so just relaying those experiences and stuff. So, Well, the thing about Skip is, I mean, he's been a high school baseball coach, ran camps, been a super assistant coach, six national championships yep. he's been a part of. Comes in, builds a program at LSU, Olympic coach, Olympic assistant coach, gold medal winner, uh, you know, AD fundraiser done just about everything. So when you're talking sports, he's not just a baseball coach or an AD. He's also a sports enthusiast. So he knows a lot about sports. So for me, it's easy. You just tee him up and let him talk. Exactly. That's why, that's why you guys are here, right? This is perfect. I was going to say, you guys know everything. That's between the two of you. We're going to have endless conversations here today. <laughs> it's going to be great. But uh, Skip, why don't you give us, give our listeners a little rundown? Obviously I have a good local following, but there's a lot of people that, you know, follow, you know, the podcast and stuff. Um, give a little bit about your background, Dan, kind of touched on some of the accolades, but um, how you started here at LSU and got and got into coaching and, and started yeah. your whole career there. I lived in uh, Miami, uh, Miami, Florida, and I was coaching along at the University of Miami as an assistant coach to a very wonderful coach, God rest his soul, uh, Ron Frazier, of course, one of the great ones. And we, you know, I learned a lot uh in the sense that he was a big promotions guy. You know, I learned a lot about that and didn't realize I'd need it that much. But when I went to, I took the job at LSU, not the first year to, that he offered it, yeah, but the second year. And I went up there and, uh, gosh, there weren't many fans. Yeah. You know, they weren't, I uh, watched a game with LSU and Alabama and it was quiet. Can't and there weren't many people there. I hit, oh, my God. And I had come from the University of New Orleans where we were playing Miami. I was playing where there were 5,000 yeah. at the time, you know, a huge crowd. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. I looked around, and I thought, oh, my God. Uh, it was really uh, decayed yeah. and never invested by the athletic dire uh, director at baseball. But it wasn't just LSU. It was all uh, SEC schools. Right. The only one that that had that was Ron. My friend Ron Polk in Mississippi State had a big edge because he could draw 10,000 people um, from around Starkville. Right. And, of course, he liked that and used it to his advantage. Um, and then, of course, uh, I came in. Uh, then Hal Baird came in, who was a great coach, excellent coach at uh, Auburn. 
And then all of a sudden they started to change yeah. the coaches. And they started to go with the Skip Bertman method because I had lots of fans. And you say, well, how do you get those fans? You got to work. Yeah. Uh, you got to go out and speak at 80 different occasions uh, and introduce the people. Of course, I had a season ticket that was very inexpensive, two adults and two children, for 30 games for $30, my God. Nice. And if you're not going to go the game, uh, rip it out and give it to somebody else. So the crowd grew, Yeah. and we had 20-plus thousand the first year, and then we had 40-plus thousand, and then it went up 60, and then it went up to 90, and then it hit over 100 and so on. And up until this year, we've been in tops in attendance since 1996 in the United States. At the University of uh, at LSU, and uh, this year we might not do it because uh, other stadiums are bigger than ours wow. and can fill up more people and draw well. And of course, I'm proud of that. I I, I wasn't uh, like oh, I didn't have Ron's plan. I wanted everybody to have this opportunity, so I went everywhere, played everybody. Got big crowds, and it was exciting for me to watch Southern Miss, uh, Dan. This year, didn't that look like our place? Yeah, I'll tell you, when, <laughs> when I went to, he was talking about that. When I went to Southern Miss, you know, for the regional, right? it reminded me of 1991. Yeah, sure. At LSU, meaning yeah. they had a stadium and they built it like a Lego set. You know, they just added <laughs> things know. on, because I had been there 20 years ago. Yeah. And they added things on, and like I said to Skip, when I go here, I know what's going to happen. See, they're going to run out of water. The concession right. stand lines will work. <laughs> yeah. The toilets will back up. Yeah. Uh, fans yeah. will be hot, but it'll be great. And it sure was. I mean, it, it reminded me so much of the old box. And they had the roost in right field and people <laughs> waiting in the stands. Yeah. And uh, they didn't know what they were doing, but they were, everybody was good. They were having a great time. And I was real happy for that because that's how much of an influence that Skip and LSU had on baseball, especially in the southeast. That's exactly right. Uh, Southern Miss did a great job, but I think the state of Mississippi really took a step up with Mississippi State winning last yep. year, Mississippi winning this year, and Southern Miss doing a great job. Uh, obviously, there are good players in right. Mississippi, yeah. and the travel bowl teams, uh, coaches are picking out the right guys, yeah. and there's Keep plenty of people. Yeah. Keep them in state. Yeah. There's plenty of people. And uh, that's the one thing that's – people say, what's the best and greatest difference? Well, you know, outside the fact that there are 12,000 people at Arkansas or Mississippi State or somewhere else, and that's wonderful. Yeah. But the greatest difference uh, is the number of good players on each team. Yeah. Of course, the coaches are better. And get paid a lot of money, mm -hmm. and of course they get fired if they don't right, right. win. <laughs> Crazy like, like yeah, basketball yeah. or football. Winning demand, yeah. Well, yeah. the facilities are so much better. Yeah, because all, all the teams copied right the facilities, and of course Palmineri did a good job of adding on to the stadium. But it's not our stadium is and our facilities are wonderful, but so is Mississippi. Oh yeah, Mississippi State. Yeah, Arkansas especially is uh, nice, and many and most of the others. Yeah, pretty much. I don't want to say that LSU is middle of the pack now, but are they facilities wise, well, like in the SEC at least? It's 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 in the next couple of years they got to upgrade, just like right. you do in yeah. football or anything yeah. else. Like for example, uh, Arkansas just did about twenty five million and yeah. upgraded their baseball. They have a uh, like a baseball operation center, like football has right. at LSU. That's crazy. Okay. Well, they did that, and they put in a pitching lab, which stayed of the art, and it's yep. in right field, and they brought the stands. I did a great job. Well, Texas A&M is doing 50 now. Yeah. You know, and that's after Ole Miss did a renovation. Then they've done a second renovation. Mississippi State put in condos. It's one-upmanship going on. Oh, right, this. right. And it's going to happen. So, eventually, we're going to get where LSU is going to step it up. But Skip mentioned about the attendance. I just wanted to throw this in. We had a run going, and until COVID – COVID ruined it? Well, COVID hurt us because the attendance, the ability to, to come to the games, 
we had different rules than Mississippi. So the two schools in Mississippi moved ahead because right. until about halfway through, we couldn't pack our stadium and they could. Wow. Because state law. Yeah, yeah. state law. So there's a little asterisk next to it. Right. But then this past year, uh, because of the size of the stadiums, everybody expanding, it's going to be tough to keep up that attendance. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, I'm proud of that. Yeah. Uh, people, baseball now, and what, what's exciting about it for the school is the athletic director makes some money. Yeah. So there's only three sports. There's football, of course. Right. Basketball, of course. Right. And women's basketball, maybe. Yeah. But baseball is now the next there. sport. Yeah. One of the things Skip always said is an AD. And, you know, says to other coaches is when the ADs realize that you may not necessarily make money at Southern Miss, right, yeah. but you're going to lose less than you would have, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, in a correct. budget is like making money. 100%. It's very, very uh, easy to explain. The best way to explain it is let's say you have a budget of $2 million, which isn't overly high yeah. for your whole baseball team, which includes the salaries scholarships, baseballs, bats, and everything else. And you can't make two million, but you made five hundred thousand. And you give it to the athletic director and it's like a donation of five hundred thousand. Right, right. <laughs> so it's not a bad you know, you don't know if, like yeah, it LSU, it pay in Mississippi State, yeah, and some other school it pays for itself. Right. So they're so not coming money. out of pocket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's on the balance sheet. It's like, like you said, it's almost, it's, it's right. Right. even like, out. Like, for example, one of the things he did at a, a, as an athletic director, I'm kind of branching off here, but like softball, they draw well. They do right, a good right. job. They, they don't make money, but right. they lose right. less than the other schools. Yeah. And so it's softball, more for the AD. Dan, and, softball uh, fills it up, you yeah. know, but they can't, they don't have enough people. Gymnastics can fill the uh, ba- basketball arena three times with 13000 mm-hmm. but the tickets aren't expensive. Right, right. They can only do it three times. But in uh, track and field, yeah, there's just no income. It's right. not, I, mean, I don't mean that it's, as a put down, but there's just no income. Right. It's not a spectator. You know, there's right, right. tennis and golf. Yeah. You know, there's no income and other sports. Right. You know, beach volleyball happens to have some income because of – have a nice stadium, but uh, it, it, you got to do that. You got to find any way that you can make a buck. Yeah, to fight the inflation of insurance and travel yeah. and food that you pay for all the kids. How, how did you? How did you see that? What did you see in LSU when you took that job there? Because obviously you saw that potential, right? That's a, a fine question. Uh, I, I came up here in uh, 19 from as a University of Miami coach. Yeah. In uh, 1976. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, we played and we played a UNO and then we came up here and played one game. And of course, uh, Jim Smith, then coach, was kind enough to drive me around. And I was very impressed. Miami didn't doesn't have a real campus like gotcha. that. Okay, it's city Miami. school. Miami gotcha. That city makes sense. School. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. Like USC, right, right, right. Vanderbilt it gets other lost places. in the big city. Plus, yeah. Miami is a private school. Okay, and you got a huge tuition. Right. So the eleven point seven works better at state school. Absolutely. Um, and so I knew that, and I looked at it, and I spoke to Ron. I spoke to other people. They said they could do it. I looked around. I thought, geez, I could fix this. If you don't want it too fast. Right, right. You see, that's the problem with a lot of coaches. They want it now, and you can't do it now, right. but you'll do it in two years. Yeah. And they just are so impatient. Right. How can I win if they have it and I don't? Yeah. And I say, well, you still can win. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you can still outcoach the guy. Uh, you can still recruit better. And there's plenty of baseball players but now with the travel leagues, my God, there's so many good players. Oh yeah, different game now. It's a different game. Yeah. How? What about the NIL? How much is that going to mm-hmm. change? I mean, can you imagine dealing with that, like in your in your time? How, uh, how crazy no. that would have been. <laughs> like, uh, uh, to me, giving them scholarship aid was right? <laughs> giving them too much. <laughs> to be honest, uh, having a great meal. Yeah. You know, 
uh, because we never had that in Miami, yeah, right? So, yeah, and I was so I was uh, I <laughs> coached, you know, as part I was a depression type, <laughs> yeah, coach coming out of the yeah exactly 1930 you right. know, depression. We, we coached in the Piccadilly era, uh, you yeah. know, because that's where your team meal was at Piccadilly. <laughs> well, You're they had good chase. if you got a Piccadilly meal, right? My team <laughs> had a chase all the balls down and yeah. tape them up. I you know, we that. never had enough balls. <laughs> or, we had one groundskeeper, you know. Yeah, and yeah. he was, a th- you know, I was kind of stunned at a few things. One of the people don't realize it was <laughs> the day I came here. I didn't even think about this. <laughs> they really got me on this one. And it started to rain, and I was uh, depressed that it rained often. Right. It was like Jay Johnson. Yeah. When does it stop raining? You know. Yeah, and our field, of course, was too wet. Right. And that's when I saw the single groundkeeper, <laughs> Bob McClure. <laughs> Did you Who, make all the players become groundskeepers well, then? No, but you got to, you're telling the story about the the infield, the, the river so, right? Oh yeah, that's right. The where the the dirt was river silt from the Mississippi River. No way. So I saw <laughs> Bob we had hip boots because when he stepped. He stepped down three feet. No way. So you couldn't get that dry yeah. in a day or two. <laughs> he said, well, you see, I got to pick this up. And t-. I said, we can't have that. We have to have red clay. <laughs> oh, red Georgia Georgia, clay. Georgia red yeah, clay. Yeah. And the guy said to me, where do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know. This is your job. I thought no, you no. would know. Georgia red clay. Where yeah, you so get we, we, Georgia. <laughs> we went to Georgia and we got some red clay in a truck. And I had to raise all the money when the truck I needed 18 yards for this. And 18. And nobody knew what I was talking about. And, and of course, now the field is, is uh, yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, coach can't touch it. The groundskeepers are. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the Mississippi River brought a lot of water onto the field. Back in nineteen eighties, and uh, you, you, when you were in the dugout, which was only five feet, uh, ten inches tall at the back, five feet ten inches. Now, yeah, you would hit your head. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm not walking in that dugout. Yeah, yeah we had a guy. Many people bumped their heads. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we we had that. We went after new dugouts, and it was you have to understand it was an LSU factor. Yeah, uh, if somebody wants to build it. They know that some LSU engineer will come in and say, "No, that's not right. You got to redo that." <laughs> so they add money for right. that, and the bids are very high. So I gave him a hundred thousand dollars worth that did to Florida. I brought the actual prints, you know, the actual uh, prints that had the dugouts down yeah. by the architects. And I gave it to the guy, and I said, "Here, a hundred thousand. Make me two dugouts. Yeah. Come back two hundred and forty thousand oh each." God. Oh my God, <laughs> that's great! And then we, so I wouldn't take it, and uh, I said, "I'm not doing it." Yeah, you see, I says, you, you, "You're ripping off LSU." Yeah, and I'm not doing it. So I went back, and we uh, got a guy who needed the money, I guess, and. He did it, and he put in both dugouts for sixty-seven thousand hey, dollars. There we go. And we used the rest of the money to do some things around the field, and it was great. That and of great. course, uh, I wish more people, as an AD, right? I wish more coaches thought like that, but they don't. Yeah, you know, they think that that makes a difference. And 100%. the truth is, uh, it's nice to have theater-style seats. In your meeting room, yeah. Anthony. Like you, you never had those, and you won, and you went to the big leagues. <laughs> Did all okay. right. Okay, and it's nice to have a room in the back. So if Anthony Renato is going to come back to throw, we got a shower for him. Right now, that's nice. Yeah, but you can't win a ball game because right. Anthony Renato showers right. <laughs> in the back. You can't win a ball game because you got a theater style seats right right you have to have the players yeah all right and of course that they figure well that's the recruiting see they're gonna come now yeah 
I said, anybody comes to your program because you got theater style seats, ain't gonna play. <laughs> uh, he he didn't have it. You want the guy that really loves LSU that wants to come, yes. doesn't care about that stuff, wants to win. And fortunately, I was able to get those guys yeah. without all the stuff that they have today. Yeah. So, like, well, you were recruited by other people uh, that aren't there now. They're head coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Some, somewhere else. I always say, too, one of the best stories that I always say, you helped a little bit in my recruiting. You were still the AD yes. the, I think, my last year, yes, maybe, or I whatever. Was the AD. But I, also on my visit, I think, you know, Terry Rooney did a good job. Paul Maneri did a good job bringing me yes. up to, to meet you. But um, sitting in your office while you were talking to my dad and I was one of the greatest experiences just talking about how you, the legacy that you created, the things that you'd done, the stadium that was about to be built and everything, yeah, those right. kinds of things. And I think I always tell people all the time, you always, for the next 10 years, 15 years, whenever I saw you, I would shake your hand. Hey, Skip, how you doing? And you say, hey, how's Angelo doing? He remembered my dad's name from that <laughs> meeting that one time. I'm like, this is Miss Man's unbelievable. So I, I love that. <laughs> he, uh, he studied that. He studied how to learn names. But, yeah. of course, how can you not remember Angelo Ronaldo? <laughs> I mean, That's there should true. be a, a, a mini series. The, you know, well, I think, I think it was called The Sopranos. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think it was, yeah. Okay. In the beginning... Uh, when Cliff Godwin and Terry recruited you guys, see, Paul, uh, who this is great, and I hired him, it was terrific, but he had no name, you can't recruit like right, that. Right. See? And he didn't know even what that meant when yeah. he says, give, give Renato 80%, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, give another, give Coleman. Yeah. All right. They did. He he didn't even know. Not knocking Manero is just different way. Right, right. And of course, <clears throat> those two brought in big recruits like you, uh, people that turned down money out of high school. Yeah, which is very difficult in those days. Yeah, like uh, when I coached, it was impossible. Everybody signed for forty two thousand yeah. dollars. Thirty-six thousand. I thought it was a big deal. Yeah, right. and I tried to explain to them, you know, if you come to the university, you know, they weren't ready for that. Now, people turn down a million dollars to go to the university. Often, right? I yeah. mean, Dylan Cruz even like. Well, and with NIL, yeah. it's going to be even bigger exactly. because there's yeah. money available, so they wait two, three years and let inflation. Yeah, and the uh, you know the demand, supply and demand yep. take over. And well, the NIL, the chess, what we really didn't give you an answer naturally we're scared about that um but somehow our coach jay johnson recruited five kids from the portal <laughs> and he's really got no good. extra money that's crazy yeah that's unbelievable and then and the names too that's the that's the wild part well, it's like free agency actually the, i read this last week there's close to a billion dollars out Nobody talk. I remember it's private money, right? And nobody talks about it. And of course, they're going to have to pay income tax, and, right? And they will, uh, and they'll learn how. And I don't think that's the problem. The problem, of course, is uh, well, what's the guy going to do to earn his money, and how will it affect the team? Yeah, the coach and his teammates. Yeah. And how long will you have the value for the guy putting up the money? Or his company. That's like if Cards and Cultures sponsors an NIL deal, yeah. are you going to get business from that or is right. that just going to be a black right. hole? Right. And so it's exciting right now, but in the next two, three years, it's going to level off. And probably the biggest thing, I think, with NIL that really made it go off, off the rails a little bit was the transfer portal at the same time. Because yes. what you created was free agency with no, gar with no salary cap. Exactly. That's exactly what so it kid way to could put it right say... There. To Coach Johnson, which he wouldn't be able to say to Coach Maneri or when I coached, uh, you call him, we're ready for you. Come on. We offered yeah. you 80%. And, you know, and he's, well, I get 10000 extra dollars over at Arkansas. Right. And, of course, I'm just making that right, up. Right, right. But, uh, and then what do you do? You, you, well, I don't have 10000 <laughs> Right. You know, or I'll give you five. Yeah. I mean, or what do you do? you got to be prepared for that now 
That's I mean, crazy. Though. It's a whole yeah. different recruiting. You better have some people on speed dial to be like, hey, do we have any NIL deals for this guy right. coming up, right? Well, here, and the thing is, you're not technically supposed to be able to offer an NIL deal as part of the scholarship. Right. Part of recruiting. Right. It's definitely happening. I, th- yeah. I think my thoughts on this on NIL and with Major League Baseball yeah. is it's going to affect a lot of things in Major League Baseball because with COVID, they knocked out 42 minor league teams. Yeah. And they haven't replaced them. Right. And now college baseball is becoming more and more prevalent oh, sure. as a single-A, double-A affiliate, exactly. so to speak. And the guy's ready to play, and he's played in front of crowds if you play in the SEC. So they have a better read on the kid. But now with NIL, there's less kids going to sign out of high school because they can go to an SEC school. Yep. So I think you may see a decline in minor league baseball with the NIL. What do you think, Coach? Yeah. I think there's going to be a – I think they – well, that we were always – the minor league, <laughs> and you can't take the kid till the, you're a junior. Right. And that's great for professional baseball. Yeah. And I uh, wish it was four years that they wouldn't, but right. they don't want that. Yeah. Now they set it July 17th for the draft. I mean, you're dead. Yeah. I mean, you can't replace a kid in July. Yeah. And they did it because they wanted around the All-Star game, not really right. for any reason. Right. Well, I, see, here's the thing. Well, they're not interested. Well, they, they're they the boss. Yeah, they uh, own us. Big yeah. league ball and the yeah. owners. We can't beat them. See, the, the it used to be the draft was in June, right. early June. Right. And then you had till July 1 to make a decision. Right. And with NIL and with the transfer portal, basically, that would have been draft insurance. Uh, somebody yeah. signs in the draft, right. you got a month got, to get somebody exactly. from the portal. Yeah. Well, now it's just a free-for-all. And you don't know. You don't know because it's going to be over. Dan did a little research. How many baseball, about how many baseball players? Uh, 2,431 hit the portal in baseball <laughs> as of last Friday. And out of that, 251 have found another school. And of those, 35 are junior colleges. Oh, Supply my and demand. God. The COVID kids. There's so many COVID kids right. extra I'll, years. I'll right, tell you right, what, right. what else is there. There's a lot of kids out in the portal that were freshmen, say, at school A. Right. And the coach said, listen, I can't, can't you use yeah. you. So go on the portal. And see what so happens, yeah. Well, That's the, where you see the other 800 kids. Well, and the COVID numbers, remember, the roster's expanded to 40. Now they're right, back to right, 35. Right, right, right. So that means five guys from every school. That's right. Got to get just cut. Yeah, they're just, yep. And right. if you got Ooh. more guys you want to get from the portal – at a bigger school, then that means five guys you're bringing in, five guys are leaving. Yeah. So bigger schools, 10 or 12 guys could be asked to go to the portal because they're not going to play. Oh, my God. So it's created a whole uh, – too many people in the portal and not enough jobs. Yeah. Not enough, not enough places to play. Right? So, and it's also going to create kind of like a crazy ending of July after the draft, right, when everybody sees yes. where it, it – People are going to be picking schools really quick. Well, we're, quick. We're when very, that draft hits the next day, you're going to see guys yes, jumping all exactly, around. Exactly. Yeah. We're very. That's wild. Uh, our coach had the number one recruiting class in the country. Yeah. You know, he's got about 20, 18, 20 people. All right, but of the 18, 20, he's got these first round guys. Renato type guys. <laughs> yeah. Got Renato type guys. Good. He, he, had, he did a good job. Yeah. But the guys up their game. And likely, even though the draft is down, meaning they're only drafting 20 rounds, it's instead of 40 like they used to, yeah. it's still uh, we're going to lose the good guy yeah. that's going to get $3 million right, right, right. You know, in the first round and all the way down. And so Coach thinks he's going to lose uh, four or five. Yeah. Well, we got four or five guys coming in too, though. That's like, yes. hopefully He's, good too. Jay, yes. I, I got to give Jay. Yeah. Jay is on the cutting edge he, of this new world great. of recruiting. Yes. He's terrific. He's and done great with the, the changes. Yeah, you can't say I'm, anything except the guy I'm, is living in the world he's living in, and he's trying to be at the top of his game. Yep, and he's doing a great job with it. He's moving yeah. with the changes too. That's the thing. That's well, so he, great. he yeah. did. He lost uh, LSU has a great brand because of people like you and people before you. Has a great brand. All right, it's so good that Jay says, I wouldn't have gone to any other school. Yeah. Okay, then he <laughs> picks coaches that said, I wouldn't go to any other school. That's like Maneri said. Yeah. And a lot of people do that. All right, the important thing to remember on 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 this thing in the 
is that we can get great people. And now I think Jay's got the greatest hire that's ever been at LSU. He's got a major league pitching coach Pulled from the mid-season. Minnesota Twins who are in first place, you know, over Cleveland. Crazy. And we've given him more money <laughs> than he makes in the big leagues. Right. Well, this guy is terrific. Yeah. Okay. He coached at Mississippi State. He coached at Arkansas. And he doesn't want he's got a young kid and he don't want to travel as much. Yeah. And I understand right. you know what what's happened, but he wouldn't do it if it wasn't L S U or maybe Arkansas SEC or SEC school or yeah. Yes. Yeah. but some school that he'd been to maybe. <clears throat> But uh, he, he'll be a head coach. Now, we yeah. lost two in one year with Jay. <laughs> we lost two guys. We lost yeah. an assistant uh, deputy AD to Nevada. Yeah, the brand. We're, yeah, we're taking yeah, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of major players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, the uh, big people at LSU. Right. So, yeah. uh, the entire school is t- wonderful, but the athletic department is so visible like, mo- like every yeah. other school. And your attention is focused on the football team, or be, and we've done so well in women's basketball, men's basketball, and obviously Kim Mulkey uh, is so great. You know, mm-hmm. got a national championship coach in gymnastics. We do so well. You know, we, we do well in every sport. Golf, yeah, we do real well. Tennis, we do real well. Beach volleyball, That's, beach volleyball, yeah, beach volleyball. Add an extra sport tremendous. and just be top five in the country. Yeah, yeah always in the top five. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But speaking of the coaches and, and even people leaving and going different places, I know that's how you guys, you know, can, started your guys' career together. Talk to me a little bit about the influence that you've had on coaches going and then, you know, kind of taking the things that they learned from you, but also just that impact that it has on players throughout college baseball. I think that's kind of like the biggest thing of your legacy that I've seen as well. Oh, thanks. Um, I, I think as a uh, coach, my system – uh, other than Coach Canterbury, uh, maybe some people, Beetle Bailey and some people that are gone now, um, nobody really picked up. And I had a few kids that wanted to coach. They weren't great players, but they felt they had a lot of information. Mm-hmm. And they went out to coach and found out that it's hard. And uh, they found that I probably outworked, you know, most of the coaches. Yeah. Uh, you know, to get outsmart a few. And uh, although it's a podcast and you can't see me, but I, what I'm doing with Anthony, I'm showing him the steal signal at the time. Ready? The steal signal was. <laughs> you know, well, they can see you, Coach. I'm running, yeah, we got a YouTube I'm video, too. I'm running my yeah, fingers, <laughs> right? Thank I will you. say this. You said, no, Mike Bianco just won the national yeah, championship I mean, yeah. with yeah. the system. Yeah. And Mike was a he, system he, player uh, and a coach. Yeah. He's he was a great player that, yeah. for me. He was a great coach for me. And he went into coaching, and he's the number one assistant that I've had that you asked yeah. about, you know, that yeah. I've influenced. And, of course, he's called and said, thank you. I love you. And so, yeah. And we've been very close the whole way. Of course, he was offered a job here. Yeah. Turned it down. I yeah. wanted him when I was the AD. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he turned it down. And now, of course, he's the king in, in Oxford. Yep. And uh, for the rest of his career. Yep. And what did – uh was Jim Wells, did he – Another he, disciple? Did, yes. Yeah. Jim was up at Alabama? Yeah, Jim, I'd say Jim was also – He recruited me at Alabama, actually. Yeah, yeah. He, he's That's how I knew the, the the story of him a little yeah, bit. He's yeah, he's terrific. You know, yeah. He did a great job. First, he went up to uh, Natchitoches, and he did a great job. He won 17 in a row. Mike went with him, Mike Bianco, uh, to be a graduate assistant. Oh, okay, that's Mike cool. Mike turned the draft down. Oh, wow. You got to respect that. You know, yeah, Chris absolutely. was a high pick. Yeah. But you got to respect that. And he... Goes there and he gets his master's degree and he learns a lot from Jim Wells, yeah. who's also great. He had to retire, had some family problems. He had to retire, gotcha. okay, you know, and some health problems. So he had to retire a little earlier, but he was terrific. He was a great yeah. coach. 
Good. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. But I, last thing that I would do want to talk about, you know, it's I think the reason that I'm able to have a business here and you see a lot of other guys, the influence that you've had um, with players, the tradition, that kind of stuff, even getting guys to buy in. Talk to me a little bit about that psychology, you know, that I don't know if it's a team thing, a coaching style or that, but the way that people buy it, buy in, especially even kids from uh, I'm New a, Jersey, you know. I'm a, it, that's correct. I, mean, uh, I was talking to Terry, who's, and, and we were doing something, and his son, Houston, was right close, and mm-hmm. we were talking, and when I coached, I, the, the kids believed they could, every kid. Right. And I was intense. So it wasn't for everybody. Right. <laughs> Meaning you had to be an intense You had to be ready. And you had to want to win. See? And so I had a lot of kids that threw 90-plus but didn't pitch. And I'm sorry for them, and I'm sorry that I was coaching that way, but they had a good run out of school. Yeah. And they did. So, Dan, what do you think? As an assistant coach to Skip, like, for my whole life, it feels like. Yeah. Uh, you know, I met him at 18 at Miami yeah. and was a, was a limp on. I'm a walk-on. And, That's so great. And uh, GA and worked with him and then came up here. The one thing he did and he told us as assistant coaches is, you can evaluate him as a player. You can look at their skills and everything. But when you coach him, you got to coach him from the inside out not the outside in. So he said, yeah, there's a lot of guys can teach them how to hold their curveball and everything, but you got to get inside them and develop them inside. And I think that's what he did, and that's why the guys bought in. Yeah. Because he genuinely cared. And the other thing is, Skip's mag- magic. You know, but he used to ask me as an assistant, what does he do? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a big yeah. question. Like Rod Delmonico. Yeah, like, like, what's he do? What drill? And I, he does everything. Yeah. And there's... You know, 75 things that he does 2% better than the rest of you guys, and he does them all the time, and that's right. what makes the difference. And I think the thing is he, he just tried to figure out every player and treated every player fairly because he treated every player different. Yep. I love that. I mean, that's it. Like, he that's, knew which buttons to yeah, – he knew who you key. could get on. He yep. knew who you had to pat on the back. Yep. And he has unbelievable timing to do it just when you needed it. That's what I've heard, too, the timing, right? You know when to say something at the right time, the right way, sure. with the right player, and that's the main thing. Uh, well, I've been doing this all my life, yeah. uh, you know, even as a kid. Yeah. And I had a mentor who taught me things when I was in high school. He was a professional – former professional player – Taught me things in high school when I was a catcher that I still used at LSU. I love that. Yeah. That's what I always say too, right? P- certain people will say things that will stick in your brain longer and different, yes. and that's probably a skill set that you had with players too, right? Like you just said things that stuck in them different. You said it at the right time when they needed to hear it. That, that's right. Yeah. I always wondered what, what kind of coach it would have been but for But he me. would wait it. until they were ready to hear it. Yes. Right. He knew it Yeah. six months before yes. he said it. Yep. And his patience and timing was everything. Yep. Right. I think today there's a, a lot of coaches making ooh, big six figures. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, you know. Like Mike's going to. Like, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to sign Mike, up. Mike's bonus, already yeah. done that. And <laughs> yeah. our coach and other yeah. schools that have been successful. And uh, that that's nice. I mean, that's good, too. And probably they should have another get rid of that volunteer coach and put in a real, well, you know, stop yeah. the volunteer. Right. Like, and make him, like, the th- fourth like coach. Like a true but coach, yeah, yeah. They probably will. Yeah. They'll also probably look at these equivalency scholarships where you delve out 80% and the guy says, I'm getting 90 at Arizona State. Yeah. You know, and you stop, you stop that. See, they don't like that, the right, NC2A. Right. So what they're going to do is, if they, and they can do this, they can give baseball X number of scholarships that are full, say, or almost. Right, almost full. Yeah. We'll give everybody tuition fees and books yeah, 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 across right. the board exactly. for 35 guys right. instead of so, giving yeah, it up. Right, whatever they, they can do. do that. Say, or they can just come up and say, "We'll give you this many full scholarships," yeah. like they've done with gym, gymnastics and other sports. Right. Like they're going to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll see that. Now, the only problem—it's not a problem—but uh, they must, by law, give the same amount of scholarships to women. 
Right. So softball, which has 13, I think. All right, they got 13, and baseball's 11-7. Yeah, softball's got 13. Football. Well, why oh, is okay. that? Okay. Whoa, that's gender equity. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Why do they have 13 and men have 11 if ba- baseball, football, softball? Because of the gender equity. <laughs> number of athletes. Oh, oh, oh okay, gotcha, gotcha. All the women the football have sports them. make it. It's yeah. a total number of men's sports or men's athletes and women's athletes? Well, that's a good question. And the answer is uh, the football team has more players than there are female athletes. Ah, okay, okay. So you got to drop football out of the equation. Gotcha. And then you got to be super equal. Right. In order to be equal, like men's golf, uh, at the time I was there, they did more scholarship. They didn't have as many scholarships as women's golf. Gotcha. Same as tennis. Gotcha. See. And, uh, and then they put beach volleyball in, which is yep. about 20 women. Yeah. It's not just two. Right, right. It's like. We got a squad. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's okay. It's good. Yeah. Women should be treated equal, of course. But you can't throw football into the equation. No, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, because they're they're going to bring in $50 million or (laughs) $60 million that's going to pay for your whole thing. So it isn't unfair. Right. You know, because all the money goes to softball. Or girls tennis, you know, so right. the money still goes, but you got to root for football. Yeah, they that's where the money is. Good stuff. Well, gentlemen, thank you. I really appreciate this. I, uh, I mean, Skip, Cano, you guys are the best. Thank you. Let, uh, is there a website or does everybody go to? We've got a Facebook page. Hold there the we rope. go. All right, on, on Facebook, and we're on Twitter now. Hold the rope show. There we go. So uh, we're we're expanding. We're getting. Uh, I love all it. Guys are figuring I love this it. stuff out. I'll uh, I'll tweet something out there about the about the link too on Twitter because that's yeah. that's one of my social media platforms that I actually feel like I know about because this is the perfect timing for me because I feel out of the loop too with all these things but yeah yeah these young guys I know young TikTok girls. are you on TikTok no I'm not a TikTok <laughs> yet <laughs> what about you Skip TikTok no, no. TikTok to him is the clock <laughs> in his living room right yeah I was like no, I didn't want to be rude yet. and ask what it was right. did you know you know what TikTok is right yes okay I I got you know I lived in a cave compared to these people. <laughs> different days yeah i mean you know i was coaching they didn't even have telephones <laughs> you know so you yeah, can loan. you imagine texting a recruit right now yeah, and that's right navigating those laws and lines mm-hmm. oh my god i can't imagine well, thanks for having us yeah no thanks. thank you guys i appreciate Good it luck. thank you i'm gonna put everything in the show notes where they can find your guys show i appreciate the time thank you okay thanks, thanks.